Well, if you were one of the lucky fans in these stands tonight, you got to see the Super Cup Stock Car Series make a return to Jennerstown for the second time this year. So let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the Super Cup race and also our usual five divisions of racing. The Super Cup Stock Car Series made their second trip to Somerset County this year to compete at Jennerstown with two 35-lap twin races. The night did get started with two 10-lap heat races for the Martellus Pharmacy late models. Jared Barclay in the 92 started on the pole and accelerated to the front at the drop of the green flag. He did have to fight off Owen Hauft in the 51 and Gary Wiltrout in the 95 to get the top spot in turns 3 and 4. Wiltrout was behind Barclay the whole time as he could not find a good move as Jared Barclay picked up the win. On to heat race number 2. Brian Ship in the 48 rocketed to the lead as the rest of the field got stacked up behind him. Teddy Gabala in the three, who started the race last, got the Zane Farrell to take second away. But Brian Shipp had enough distance to hang on and get the win. Those were the only heat races of the night as the Super Cup Stock Car Series took the green flag for the first 35-lap feature. Jason Kitzmiller in the 97 came around to lead lap one, but June 19th's winner Brent Nelson in the 80 car was right behind him with June 19th's runner-up Ben Ebeling in the 44. Nelson got to the inside of Kitzmiller to take the lead and Ebeling was right behind him in second. The first and second place cars from one month ago picked up where they left off as Ebeling was doing everything he could to get the top spot, but Nelson was holding strong when Ebeling attempted a move. But Ebeling got to the bumper of Nelson, who got sideways coming out of turn four with 17 laps to go. Nelson went back with Bob Schacht in the 75, who was holding third. Now to the white flag. Ebeling extended his lead and was hoping to cruise for the win. But everyone was keeping their eye on former Jennerstown weekly competitor Lauren Butler, who was slow on the backstretch and could potentially bring out a caution, which was the last thing Ebeling wanted to see. And guess what? It occurred. As the caution came out on the final lap, Butler needed a push back to the pits. Here we go with the green-white checker with Ebeling and Schacht on the front row. They went door to door, down into the turns, one and two, when there was trouble on the backstretch. Bob Shack got spun around as his backside hit the inside wall. Luckily, his car did stay on all fours, but Shack was done for the night as he did walk away unharmed from the incident. Now onto the second green-white checkered. It was Nelson and Ebeling side by side again as Nelson tried to give Ebeling a little nudge for the lead. But it was Ben Ebeling holding on and picking up win number four of 2021 in the Super Cup Stock Car Series. Nelson did have some words to say about Ebeling after the race, so it's going to get interesting how Nelson will race Ebeling in race number two later on. It was then back to the weekly racing divisions with the feature for the Somerset Trust Fast and Furious Force. Jet Vasses in the 12 jumped out to the lead as they went four wide behind him going into turn one. Vassos came around to lead lap number one, but there was trouble early as Caleb Vassos in the 57 got loose in turn one, and Colton Buchanan in the five had nowhere to go as he ran into the outside wall. Buchanan had to get service in the pits, and Michael Mull in the eight had significant damage on his front bumper. Vassos rocketed back to the front on the restart, and he continued to extend his lead over Michael Strauss in the 66. Vassos was still holding the lead with six laps to go when Jason Truscott in the 26 had trouble getting up the speed, so that brought out caution number two. On the restart, Vassos had the advantage again, but Strauss was not far behind this time. But Vassos was able to hold on as he gets his third win of the season, but he is still 24 points behind Michael Saylor in the point standings. Next on the list were the Farmers Union Co-op Chargers. Cal Burkholder in the 27 was the first to get out to the lead. As Burkholder was extending it, Steven Singo in the 7 was working the inside of Nick Nemec, looking to take second away from the 19. And as they were approaching turn 1, Nate Valente in the 52 got too close to the inside of Bob Mostaller in the 43 as he spun out, taking Justin Frampton in the 66 with him, as he had nowhere to go as he made contact with Mostaller. Mostarler needed a push, and Frampton's car had to be towed, while Valente went into the pits for repairs. 
Now onto the restart with 13 laps to go. Burkhorter was back out front, but Singo was not far behind. Singo then got to the back of Burkhorter as he was waiting to make his move for the lead. Singo then got to the inside of Burkhorter and he continued the close in as they raced side by side. Then a crucial mistake by Burkhorter as he got loose in turn four and Singo capitalized, but he was not out of the clear yet as Burkhorter had a nice rebound getting back to the side of Singo. Then Singo started working the outside and cleared Burkhorter for the lead. Then on the final lap, going down the back stretch, Burkhorter had space on the inside to get the Singo. He tried to stay low going into the turns, but Singo prevailed, picking up win number two of the season, as he is now only two points behind Cal Burkhorter in the points. Singo is also commemorating this season to his late stepson Tanner. Now it is time for the Ron's Collision Center Street Stocks. Mel Wilt and Harold Meyer started on the front row, but it was Wilt in the 33 jumping out to the lead. They went three wide behind him as Casey Flegel in the 113 was already looking to make his charge to the front. But as they completed lap number one, there was trouble for the 20 of Josh Kokenauer as he went into the inside wall in turn one to bring out the caution. Kokenauer needed a tow back to the pits. Will took the lead again on the restart and Flegel already made it up the fourth. Flegel was looking to stay undefeated in feature races this season and get win number seven in a row, dating back to the 2020 season finale. Flegel got to the outside of Rick Melib in the 37, looking to take third away. Flegel got around him as there was a battle for the lead with Wilt and Greg Burbage in the 44. Burbage went to the inside of Wilt for the lead. Flegel then got up to Wilt as he was looking to take second away this time. Flegel got around him with eight laps to go, and he got what he wanted when Harold Meyer spun out on the backstretch to bring out another caution. Flegel took the lead from Burbage when the green flag flew. He then extended his lead as he got lucky number seven tonight, celebrating in Stoney's victory lane for the seventh time in a row. Then came along the second twin 35 lap race for the Super Cup Stock Car Series. Brett Nelson got to the lead on the backstretch, taking it away from Kevin Cromer in the 77. Nelson piled on to the lead as Evelyn got around Kitzmiller for third. Now, with 23 laps to go, Nelson was still out in front and Evelyn chased Cromer down looking to take second away. He got around him in turn three as he met Nelson again, but had a long way to go with Nelson holding nearly a half straightaway lead. Now with 12 laps to go, Evelyn was still chasing Nelson down as they approached lap traffic with Jeff Zilweger in the 18th. Embling continued to close the gap, but would it be enough to get to Nelson? To the white flag, Embling finally got close to Nelson, as he only had two turns to try to make a last-ditch move. Going into turns three and four, Embling attempted to go to the inside, but it was not enough, as Brent Nelson gets his second win at Jennerstown this year for the Super Cup Stock Car Series. Embling was in second, and Kevin Cromer held on to third. Back to the final two features of the night with the one-stop auto sales pro stocks. Jim Bryce in the 14 got a good start out front with Chris Brink in the 7 behind him. And it may look like you are seeing doubles on your screen, but note my friends, those are two 22s on the track. Dale Kimberly was involved in the crash a few weeks ago which put his first car out of service for a few weeks. So in the meantime, Kimberly bought the blue and black car you are seeing now as his other car was getting prepared. Kimberly got his original white and blue car ready to race for this week, and Adam Kostonek, who raced in the Storstown Auto Records Modifieds last year, drove Kimberly's black and blue car. As Bryce extended his lead, there was a three-car battle for second with David Campbell in the 77, Kostonek, and Brink, as they are all looking to get up to Bryce. Kostonek and Campbell separated from the field as they were reeling Bryce in for the lead. Then Kostonek began to work the low side of Bryce for the lead, as he was able to get around him to take the top spot. Then came along Will Hemminger, as he is looking for a six win in a row. Now to the final lap. All Kostownik can see was Hemminger hanging out in his rear view mirror. Hemminger tried to go to the inside on the final turn, but in just his first start in the one-stop auto sales pro stocks this season, Adam Kostownik denies Hemminger of his sixth consecutive win as he gets a congratulatory hug from Dale Kimberly in victory lane. Now off to the final feature of the night, the Martellus Pharmacy Late Models. Gary Wiltrout in the 95 and Teddy Gabala in the 3 started on the front row. They battled door-to-door -door until Wiltrout took the lead with Gabala and Mike Sweeney in the 11 behind him. 
As Wiltshout was extending his lead, Barry Audi in the 75 got around Sweeney with 10 laps to go to take second. But would he have enough time to run Will Trout down to be in contention for the lead? Audi got close, but it was not enough, as Gary Will Trout joins Teddy Gabala and Brian Shipp with gaining two wins on the season, as that taps off another great night of racing, as always, in Somerset County.